You join us during the final days of the Spirit Rover. 344 Martian days, or souls, have passed since Spirit's mission boldly began. The whole world was watching as it entered the atmosphere at over 19,500 km/h before impacting into Mars's expansive Red Desert. During those first sols, the lonely rover faced mission-threatening software and hardware issues, but it defiantly ventured way past its 90 sol life expectancy to share thousands of images of Mars as well as evidence for the existence of water on the Red Planet. In the last episode, we left Spirit climbing to the top of Husband Hill, wondering what secrets it will uncover below the Red Planet's surface and whether it will succeed with its grand mission objectives. I'm Alex McColgan, and you are watching Astrum. Join me today to continue with Spirit's journey as it reaches the summit of Husband Hill and pushes on to territory NASA never expected to reach. We will highlight Spirit's major discoveries and follow our trusted rover to the very end. This is a journey as full with scientific discovery as it is with adversity, one whose legacy continues to inspire us to this day, 20 years after it. Landed. We rejoined Spirit on the week of its first anniversary of landing on Mars. To celebrate, it is studying a rock named Champagne on the slopes of Husband Hill. Yes, even robots need to party. And as a robot, it enjoys its Champagne in the most socially unacceptable way possible, alone and with full use of its science payload. To recap, this contains the rock abrasion tool, ray T, which exposes the fresh surface of a rock of interest, the microscopic imager, MI, which is able to capture fine details of a rock structure to learn about its composition, the alpha, particle X-ray photometer, APXS, used to measure the elemental makeup of a sample, and the Musbauer spectrometer, MB, which is used to analyze mineralogy or the chemical makeup of the rock. After these measurements, however, the Spirit team confirmed the existence of a minor short circuit of 0.1 V. This short wouldn't affect the day-to-day -day operations of the rover, but it would make Spirit more vulnerable to subsequent damage. Otherwise, Spirit was doing well, and the team continued to traverse up the soft, dusty slopes in increasingly complex maneuvers to ensure that our rover didn't become trapped, a traverse complicated by increased dust in the atmosphere, reducing the sunlight reaching Spirit's solar panels. Some of that dust had settled as a coating layer on the panels, which meant that Spirit's team needed to be extremely careful with how they planned their route and power consumption. Nevertheless, en route to Larry's Lookout, a point on Cumberland Ridge, Spirit analyzed two small rocks of interest, Peace and Alligator, before imaging a far larger rock much further away, but one the rover could never hope to reach. Phobos, Mars' largest moon, a 26-kilometer-wide satellite that is due to impact Mars's surface in 10 million years. With its imaging tasks completed, Spirit ventured forth across Cumberland Ridge, but only briefly, before it made an unplanned stop. NASA's engineers noticed that Spirit had curiously churned up an intriguing area of soil during its maneuvers, named Paso Robles. But what was it about this area of soil that captured NASA's interest? Paso Robles was found to contain incredible levels of salt and high levels of phosphorus, we're still trying to work out what this means, but clearly, with this much salt around, water had a hand here. A stunning and fortuitous find about the history of water on Mars, one that preceded another unexpected discovery through failure that we'll reveal later. To complete its journey to Larry's lookout, Spirit deftly reversed large sections. This maneuver helped to relieve pressure on the failing front wheel. Instead of moving forward, and pushing the struggling wheel into the ground, reversing the rover up the slopes, dragged the wheel across the surface, saving spirit energy. From Larry's lookout, spirit took this panorama on Sol 413. To the right, we can see spirit's tracks. To the left is a rocky outcrop, which is part of the Cumberland Ridge. Beyond that lies the Tennessee Valley. This image was made with 108 frames, 
each composed of five images taken through Spirit's different filters, which creates an approximate true color image. In the center of the image, 200 members away and 45 members higher in elevation, is the summit of Husband Hill, Spirit's next destination. This was to be a difficult and energy-consuming journey, but Spirit had a chance encounter that greatly improved its prospects. Mars dust devils on Sol 421 swept over the rover, clearing a year's worth of dust buildup and increasing its solar panel efficiency from 60% to 93%. Over the next 160 sols, Spirit tackled its way to the top. The increase in energy supply meant that Spirit was able to upload its data every sol with the Odyssey Orbiter, allowing the team to capture lots of information en route, including on rum samples, Paso Robles II, Big Clod, Paso Dark, Methuselah, Keystone, Pittsburgh, Independence, and Franklin without filling up its limited storage. On Sol 581, Spirit reached the first summit of Husband Hill, but our hard-working rover had no intention to stand idle. It took a 360-O panorama composed of 653 images for the first time imaging the entire deck of the rover in a panorama. Look how clean those panels are. During the nights on top of Husband Hill, Spirit also imaged both moons Phobos and Deimos in order to measure their orbits more accurately. In the panoramic image, McCool Hill and Ramon Hill are off into the e distance in the center. McCool Hill was to be its winter destination, an area where Spirit could park up and angle its panels to the sun to maximize its energy capture over the darker months, but it never reached it. So let's continue with Spirit's journey to see what it can achieve in its final 2.6 kilometers of life. On the descent of Husband Hill, Spirit was able to collaborate with the Hubble telescope to help calibrate data with atmospheric opacity readings, a sky survey, and calibration target readings. These helped with the accuracy of Spirit's measurements. Incredibly, Spirit's capability increased several times in its life, despite being 142 million kilometers away from its team of engineers. The multitasking rover installed an update as it was climbing Husband Hill, giving it the ability to drive sections autonomously, and another on Sol 1067, allowed Spirit to decide if and when to upload images and whether to extend its arms to examine rocks. Spirit gained independence as it matured. There was one decision that the NASA controllers still took on the descent of Husband Hill, though. Which rock to analyze out of a choice between two, Comanche and Miami? Comanche was chosen, and it turned out to be a rich subject to analyze. On Sol 690, Spirit discovered that Comanche was one more four magnesium iron carbonates around 10 times higher than any rock previously analyzed on Mars. Carbonates are important in further understanding the hydrological history of Mars as they are formed, in the presence of water, but dissolved by acid. So their discovery in high levels suggested that more neutral and hospitable bodies of water existed that could have been home to primitive life much earlier in Mars's history. A great discovery, but Spirit continued on tirelessly, and it reached its next checkpoint on Sol 744. Home plate features layered and weathered rocks, including this feature found on the outskirts. It's hard to imagine this being shaped by anything other than flowing water. But it was the flow of time that was shaping Spirit. The rover was charging towards the north-facing slopes of McCool Hill in March 2006 when one of its wheels failed. Exhaustive tests back on Earth at the JPL. Test facility replicating the failure could not get the wheel moving again. Spirit was now only making progress by dragging the locked right front wheel. Martian winter was coming too, and as the light fades, so too do Spirit's reserves. With these two factors combined, NASA made the call to abort the drive to McCool. Hill in favor of Low Ridge Haven. The rover found a spot with an incline of 11 which was sufficient to see Spirit make it through another Martian winter. For around eight months, Spirit remained on the ridge taking images of its surroundings. 
In one of the images, engineers spotted two subjects that were possible iron meteors. These were given the names, Zhongshan after the Chinese Antarctic base, and Allen Hills after an area in Antarctica where several Martian meteorites have been discovered, including the most well-known and noteworthy of these, ALH 4001. Found in 1996, NASA scientists suggested that this Martian meteorite may contain fossilized extraterrestrial life, and released this image you may recognize as it became front-page news the world over. Once the Martian winter was over, Spirit had far more energy to use, and it ventured out once again. In March 2007, Spirit unwittingly excavated a surprising discovery. In the soft and red Martian soil, Spirit's failed wheel gouged the Martian, surface exposing bright white silica. Not evidence for life per se, but the next best thing, evidence for the potential of life. In our video on the origin of life, we talked about deep sea vents and areas where hot gases and material from below the crust meet the Earth's surface. Some create the potential for life to start. Others offer life a haven for growth. NASA believed that the silica deposit was made in one of two environments. Hot spring deposits, where hot water dissolves silica in one place and then deposits it elsewhere like hot springs or geysers, or acidified steam-blasting existing rocks, stripping them of much of their minerals and leaving mostly silica behind, areas known as fumaroles. Whichever it was, both environments are very supportive of microbial life on Earth. Incredible, too. Think, if Spirit had not malfunctioned, if it and NASA had given up too early, this discovery would never have been made. Spirit spent the next few months circling home plate, and in June 2007 received another life-saving spring clean of its solar panels. Spirit boosted its power generation from a dip of 120 WH back to over 600. On November 6th, Spirit navigated to the western side of home plate and took another panorama. NASA published this photo as an astronomy picture of the day, which on first inspection, looked like every other photo taken of the Martian landscape. But it was soon to receive worldwide attention. Can you spot it? Hiding in plain sight is a suspected humanoid life form. Let's zoom in to what was dubbed Little Bigfoot. On the right of the image, we can also see Spirit's tracks from Husband Hill. We are now a few hundred meters away from the end of Spirit's journey. Martian storms had been increasing in recent months, leaving the solar panels heavily covered with dust, as well as blocking up to 99% of the light. Through the atmosphere, survival was becoming harder, and operations were now much reduced from its peak. The aging spirit was generating only 128 WH, which is less than the 150 WH it requires to keep itself warm. If the heating fails, then the rover's components will eventually fail too. Two small cleaning events took the energy output of the solar arrays to 372 WH, giving the rover enough energy to charge its batteries and begin to move again. But the flow of time is always cruel. Spirit began to experience unexplained memory. Gaps in April 2009, with the rover now only four meters away from its resting place. On Sol 1892, Spirit hit incredibly soft, dusty soil at a location named Troy, where Spirit would make its last stand. Underneath its wheels was Jerosite, a mineral of iron. Kai. Sulfate with remarkably low cohesion, meaning achieving enough traction to move, was proving impossible. Despite efforts by the JPL back on Earth to explore techniques to escape the sand trap, no progress was made. On Sol 2155, NASA reclassified the mission as a stationary research platform. While there, our rover took measurements of the atmosphere and several more images, including its last panorama from Troy. Spirit was still able to perform soil studies and extraction tests because the functionality of its arm was still excellent. Spirit needed to have a busy research schedule 
to use the power it was generating to maintain good battery health. But the final winter was approaching for Spirit, and it was a bitter one. Over the next few months, the power generation continually dropped, and by Sol 2196, it was again down to the critical 150 WH. Sometime on Sol 22 weight, it is believed Spirit suffered a low power fault. On a lifeless and quiet planet, Spirit's end was never going to be dramatic, but that's not to say Spirit went gently into that good night. Now forgotten by many who watched Spirit's landing, it came to rest on the edge of home plate, alone, with two broken wheels, a drained battery, and a legacy of scientific discovery. In its life of 2088 Sols, Spirit journeyed 7.7 .7 kilometers and transferred over 128,000 images back to Earth. Its mission was an overwhelming success, achieving its objectives to further the understanding of the history of water and the chance for life on Mars. Its name lives on in the name of Asteroid 27452 Spirit, and the Perseverance rover is carrying its memory today with a family portrait of the Mars vehicles. Spirit's story is one of overcoming. Both the Spirit and Opportunity rovers lived up to their names, given to them by a seven-year-old girl named Sophie, names inspired by the struggles and promise of her own childhood. So it's fitting that as the Spirit's internal heaters turned off, as it froze under the Martian starscape, the rover's story came full circle and found its end right where it began with Sophie's words. It was dark and cold and lonely. At night, I looked up at the sparkly sky and felt better. I dreamed I could fly there. When creating scripts like this, or ones where there are a lot of physics I needed to understand, I sometimes write notes for myself on paper while I'm getting my head around my subject matter. It lets me quickly mix key points with my own diagrams, with annotations, a task that, when I do it on a computer, is sometimes a little clunky. This process is much easier with the right pen in my hand. In more ways than one, today's video is brought to you by our sponsor, Novium, whose floating pen was the one I used during my creative process. Novium's hover pens are perfect for a project like an Astrum video. They're a marvel of physics in action, floating through the interplay of magnetic fields, but they also fit comfortably in my hand as I write. Perhaps that's why they won Time Magazine's One of the Best Inventions of 2022 award. On top of that, they are themselves space-themed, making them the perfect pen for space enthusiasts. The hover pen interstellar sits at a 23.5 degree angle, in reference to the Earth's axial tilt, and its sleek design feels at home in a rocket design facility. Coming in a range of colors, there's something for the tastes of whoever you're buying for, or even if it's just a little present. For yourself to uplevel your own desk space, scan my QR code or click my link, insert link here, in the description below for a 10% discount off Novium products if you use my code ASTRUM at checkout along with free shipping to most countries. Don't miss out. Thanks for watching. Making. This video required some long-term planning and work, which we were only able to do thanks to the consistency and sustainability of your memberships as Astrum Nuts on Patreon. A huge thank you to everyone who has signed up, and if you'd like us to make more videos like this, you can join with the link down below. When you join, you'll be able to watch the whole video ad-free, see your name in the credits, and submit. Questions to our team. Once again, a huge thank you from myself and the whole Astrum team. Meanwhile, click the link to this playlist for more Astrum content. I'll see you next time.